also a medical doctor. Uh, my background is general practice, and I do a lot around uh, mobile health and, you know, uh, technology generally. Um, so we will be talking on the topic, digital transformation in healthcare. We'll be looking at the analysis, you know, of the health records, and um, we'll recognize the health uh, record professionals. Um, so just to, without too much ado, one minute, I hope oh, my, okay, so I'll use my hand. Uh, okay, oh, one minute, all right, that's it. Okay, so um, at the end of my presentation today, I will have gone through, uh, you know, introduction to medical records. We will understand how that relates to the healthcare system and um, the importance of, you know, getting involved in, in accurate uh, healthcare, I mean, health records uh, management system that will improve, or how, how that will improve the quality of care that we deliver as uh, healthcare professionals. Sorry. All right, so, I think for us to understand the, the topic properly today, uh, I want us to look at the healthcare system. No. We need to understand what healthcare system is. How does this relate to, you know, um, how does the health record management, oh, no, how does it you know, relate to uh, the kind of, sorry, please, can we mute our phones? As, um, can we mute our system as a company, please? Okay, so for us to understand the health system, we need to know what we mean by, you know, the health of an individual. So from by WHO, we, the health of an individual is, is defined as a state of physical, mental, and social health, you know, uh, in which disease and infirmity are absent. So what this means is, you, you, somebody has to be balanced physically. You have to be balanced mentally and socially uh, before we can say that, okay, you have a good health system. I mean, you have a good health. And then how does that then relate to health record? Because you'll be asking the question. Uh, we, we look at a system. When we're looking at, you know, an individual's health, what makes up a good health is not only the fact that you're physically, mentally, and socially well-being. That doesn't just appear like that. There are a whole lot of system around those that play together for an individual to have, you know, um, a sound health uh, as, it, as it might be. So when we look at this, I, I look at a system like a cardiovascular system, for instance. When you talk about cardiovascular system, we mean that a system through which the blood in, us, in, in, in our body is being, you know, moved around the body for, 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 for the body to utilize, you know, uh, oxygen, nutrients, and take away uh, waste products. Now, for this to happen, you have an orchestration of so many things happen, like the heart has to function well, the blood vessels has to function well. As you're talking about the arteries, you talk about the veins and all that. That forms a system. So a system is not just one thing. It's something that has so many nodes attached to it. And the same thing happens when we, I mean, it's the same thing when we talk about the health system. In the health system, is defined as, you know, um, the, the, the organization of people, institution, and resources that would deliver healthcare services to meet the health needs of a targeted population. So there are so many things involved in it. One of it is the health record. So the way we package our health records would determine what the health system we have. I'll put an example down. I practice in England and I practice in Nigeria. If I have my patients in England to see, as soon as the patient walks in, most of the time you have, I mean, in, 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 in the primary healthcare setting, you have the background about this patient, all the information, everything, whether in physical format or in electronic format, everything is together. And then I can reasonably look at the, you know, past uh, history of this patient and then know how I'm going to plan for the future. In Nigeria, 
I've seen a few patients here and there. And what, what then happens is I, I will use Nigeria and UK, the places that I, I practice as, a, as an example throughout my presentation. So if you come to Nigeria and I look at my patient, patient walking, most times I don't have an idea what has happened before. There is no uh, you know, structured health record in most places. There are places that you find a few here and there. And what that means is the system that is operating makes it challenging for us to be able to actually, you know, put, uh, to, to look at the patient in totality and the continuity of care is then skewed. So healthcare system is, is a system whereby all the, the notes, including the health record of patients, the notes, you know, the kind of people that the patients see, the kind of uh, investigation or institution that will deliver investigation, how, re how, how reliable are they? All these things will then form the health system. And also, we, we should not forget the, the, the traditional uh, form of care. Now, let's now look at, uh, sorry, my, my computer. Okay, brilliant. So, now when we, when we talk about record keeping or healthcare record, how does, that, how does that relate to how we deliver care? Uh, best practice is what we're all looking at. You know, every, we all want to deliver a, a, a best practice in every, I mean, in whatever form or format that we're, we're, we're practicing. And that will include things like, you know, uh, good performance, we need to have adequate knowledge, we need to have our skills sharp on health, you know, the, yeah, 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 yeah. we have to be ethical in our, in our, in our approach and in, in an approach to practice. The health record play a, lot, a, a very significant, you know, impact in all these being delivered. Because if we look at a, a system whereby you have the patient record together, you can, you can easily, your performance in terms of how you deliver care to this patient becomes quite, you know, uh, upgraded in a, compared to a situation where you just treat people randomly, you do not know what happened to them yesterday, you don't know what, the person that's in them next does not know what's gonna happen, you know, uh, in the future. And it helps with the skill because if I have adequate information about the patient, I can, I can use that to appropriately, uh, you know, work with the patient to get you know, uh, the, the, the right form of uh, treatment that they might be needing. Now, that then takes us to, what do we then mean by these health records that I've been banging on about, okay? So uh, if we look at the picture here, that's where I think most people or most system we, we, we start from. Uh, well, maybe not. In history, there have been situations where people have been treated without any form of you know, form of record. But the kind of record that we majority of us are used to are uh, the paper form of record. So let's now see how we can easily, uh, um, you know, define health records. Is the physical, electronic, uh, physical and ele or electronic uh, collection. Of, um, uh, health information about patient physical and mental um, mental health, which is actually compiled in different from different sources. So what this means is when we talk about when we talk about the health record, it's 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 all the bits that we collected about the patients uh, from 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 various sources, uh, the pharmacy, the, uh, the the physician the administrator um, in laboratories. So we have all this information about a patient. Everything is put together in the, you know, from different sources. And then uh, when we have all this collected, either in the physical format or in electronic format, then we talk about, okay, now, uh, okay. So there is a little bit about the about the uh, about the history. How did we arrive at you know um, talking about health record? I think in um, it's been dated back to as far back as you know 200 before Christ, 200 years before Christ, 
And that was when a particular Chinese was trying to gather information about, you know, his, um, his, his, his patients. He has quite a number of patients and he's trying to pull things together. From there, you know, things started uh, coming together. And I think in 19, about 1892, the Americans started, you know, uh, upgrading this when a lot of, you know, uh, foreigners were going into their, into their country and they want to be sure who among these people will have infectious diseases and who will not. And from there, we, they, they start putting, you know, formats together uh, on the way to, you know, to, 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 to have a, 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 a robust health uh, record. So it started by mere putting, in, you know, just gathering some form of information and then we start upgrading and then we went into the paper form and then we now have structures you know, uh, to put, you know, health record together in a way that everybody that is going to utilize the record can understand, you know, different bits of it, right? So, what are the types of uh, health record? I think during the course of this, you know, uh, discussion, I've mentioned a couple. I've talked about, you know, uh, obviously, uh, Sorry, my point time working today. So I've talked about uh, two two form, you know, two formats of uh, health records. So I've talked about the paper formats, which is when you have the physical uh, paper formats. And this is, I mean, as a medical student, I believe this was what I I, I trained with, uh, where we, we 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 you know we we gather information about a patient, we write it out, the, the, you know, the legibility of this, how, how legible this is. Is, uh, is very important uh, because a lot of people, their handwriting is just like, uh, you know, a fish is just scratching on the table or on, on, on the paper and you can't really see what, what people are writing. And this can lead to error. It can lead to quite a lot of, um, you know, uh, uh, inaccuracies and, 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 and what's not. So it's not very, very efficient in, 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 its, in its format. There is the hybrid format as well. When I talk about the hybrid, before I can talk about hybrid, I have to talk about the electronic uh, format. So there's the electronic format, uh, and I put it as electronic health record because I'm going to talk a little bit uh, on this particular form of, um, of a health record. So that we, we have a situation where we have the paper format, and then we have the electronic format. The electronic format is the source, I mean, it's, the, it's such that you, you put, you know, you have all the information uh, put together electronically. Uh, so it's not like in the paper formats on its own. That's where you talk about the computers, you have to talk about the mobile health and, 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 and all the world. So um, the hybrid one would be a situation where you're leveraging between the paper and also you, you, you also use electronic. So there are, there are you know, healthcare um, uh, uh, service providers that I see using the paper maybe they're transitioning into the electronic formats. So they have both the electronic and the, 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 the paper formats. And in between, somebody has to balance that, 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 that gap. This is where the, 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 the role of the healthcare record professional then come into place because the, the information, when we talk about the information that we gather, it will start from where you're collecting this information, how you are putting this information together, how we are also utilizing this information and how we archive the information so that when we need to use it, we have to retrieve it in a way that it will be readily available for the practitioners who need to use it to take decision about a particular patient at the point in time. So somebody needs to be in between all these to be able to actually, you know, robustly manage the process and also uh, the, 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 the accuracy and you know, um, educate others about how to even uh, use and retrieve and use this this information. We will talk more about the role of the healthcare uh, uh, health record practitioner uh, professionals in, in a bit. Right. So, uh, so I mentioned transitioning from you know paper based to electronic based uh, electronic record now. This is very important because majority of you know majority of the health uh, facilities, I mean, 
if they've been in existence for, for, for some time, even if they're new, a lot of people will start from the paper formats. The paper format, will, it's very easy because when you get into it, it it's easier to get, you know, patient notes and you you handwrite it and then, you know, you use the information as it's well. As long as the patient, I mean, the, 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 the documents are well, um, they're well labeled in a way that you can easily identify them. We'll talk about confidentiality later, but in this case, we're talking about the, the, the health record as it were in a physical format. So patient's name, uh, maybe their numbers and things like that needs to be on each paper that you're using and you document that, that properly. That's where most of the most of the health institution will start. And a lot, especially when we're talking, looking at Africa, this is what operates more in Africa as it's were today. Even though the plan is to move from this physical to the electronic format. And that's where the transitioning is really, really important for us to talk about. So I want to talk about, you know, obviously jumping from the old to the new, right? Now, as a health, I mean, as health, um, electronic health records is becoming quite robust in our system. This, you know, transitioning from traditional to the electronic format is really important. There are steps that we need to take. We'll talk about that in a, in, 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 in a bit. Uh, I think the, the, the states are taking a lead in this in 2004 when there are legislation and then push for all the healthcare providers to move from, you know, from physical to electronic uh, formats. And there's a lot of incentive that's put in place for, you know, for, for uh, institution that is doing, you know, uh, uh, this in the state. There are some disadvantages for the, you know, electronic health records, which we just need to know about. It is quite expensive. It's costly for us to actually implement this because it involves a lot of things. You need to invest in buying computers. You need to invest in buying whether it's even going to be iPad or whatever you're going to use. It's going to be an additional cost that you need to consider. There might be resistance, resistance especially amongst those, you know, uh, those those those, who, those practitioners who find it difficult to just move from, you know, the usual way of writing to electronics. So you might have a bit of resistance, and we need to think about that on how to, we're going to deal with that if we're moving in the in in in, in this direction. There's um. They can be interoperability inter inter issue. When I'm saying interoperability issue, um, there are when we look at Africa generally, there are so many you know companies coming up with various forms, softwares by which you know electronic health record it needs to be you know integrated I mean implemented the, the, the challenge here is when we have different sources different people having tools there will be this software here that software there and knowing the UK we talk about emix we talk about system one we talk you know all this and there was there, there was an issue where this this you know be actually you know, they're not communicating, they're not talking to, to, to one another. And that might be a major issue uh, when, when we talk about electronic health records. We also talk about security issue. Um, obviously, it's, it, it, there are, if, 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 if care is not taken and, you know, uh, measures are not put in place. In fact, I think about two years ago, the big NHS was actually hacked. So there could be issues where Hackers get into documents. Hackers get into into systems. So there, there, there will be need for us to think about, you know, the security of, of data and um, uh, not to breach or, or, or that. And there's quite a few a few more. Now I would like to clarify this just for the sake of, um, you know, uh, our trainees to know that you know there's a difference between the EMR. And EHR, the EMR, that's electronic medical record and electronic health record. It's very important for us to know the difference. When we talk about electronic medical record, the simplest way to just make this clear is to know that electronic medical record um, means a record that is gathered in a particular institution. 
maybe that might be the easiest way by by is by just single provider the record that you get from a single provider you say is an electronic medical record but when you have a record from multiple sources you have various practices pulling the record together you have you know and uh, this becomes electronic health record so it's mainly from the source that you get your information from okay okay so now let's talk about the the uh the, the, the function of electronic health record system so we we, we talk about the health information and data uh, health information and data management so when you electronic health record helps us to gather health information obviously that's what we do we gather health information and then uh to the, we are able to to manage this data data through you know uh, uh this, this 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 system let me put an example into this if we i mean in england when you gather when i when you have data from from various sources about you know about patients from there you are able to 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 to, to manage data to also um to, to to also you know distribute uh resources to understand um, the demo you know the what's endemic within the the the, the 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 area that you you know you 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 you're relating to in terms of that data and then um we also look at the, the, the decision making about patients. So this helps us because if I have somebody, for instance, who is coming to see me as a, doc, as a, as a doctor, I look, in the, I look in the health record, I'm able to see from the previous history, what, you know, uh, what, 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 what say investigations they've had before. I have the results of this. I can use those results to also deliver the next you know care, um, level of care that i need to render to this patient if there are allergy or things like that i can identify these through the health records you know so it's helping me in my decision making whether this patient for instance i can give penicillin or i cannot give penicillin or if, 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 it's, if, it's, if they're allergic to penicillin before uh what are they taking that it's you know that they've actually uh um been, that, that it's been well i mean it's be, it's gone well with them so i have all these things in the health record and that way i'm able to, to take it you know is a decision and then um electronic communication and then connectivity so in terms of you know uh the information that, that, that is ported in 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 the in the system it's easier for me to to you know to to link up in terms of um, um, you know the next level of uh, care I need to deliver to them. Then patient support uh, system. This this will help me in, in you know looking at maybe their social uh, history. From there, I'm able to see what I mean. Looking at care of the elderly, for instance, you're able to look at the the, the social support. Look at what support I need to put in place for 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 you know for this patient. And then it helps us with administrative processes. So, uh, as a healthcare professional, for instance, you get people get involved with administrative processes within the the, the, the record that is available. So we, we can we can then look at you know um, looking at the, what, what 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 we're delivering to you know to to, to patients. As let, let's look at a practice, for instance, in a practice, you want to look at from the admin point of view what sort of um, uh, level of uh, provision that needs to be to be to be to be delivered within the the organization or the settings that you're 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 working in then reports and population health so because we have all this inf the information uh, that is ported into i mean oh, we, we have readily the patient information it's easier for us to to report if there's going to i mean reports the level of care that we're either rendering in an in, in environment and how that relates to the population health uh, of the people. So there's a kind of a kind of sort of a uh, connectivity that happens when we have you know various information from uh, various patients that then gives us the ability to be able to deliver care 
uh, to the public as a whole. Now, so I think it's important for us to look at the content of health records. What is it that we find in the health record? Um, I said it earlier on that obviously when we talk about the health record, it's it's all this information that we gather from everywhere. Every, you just gather here and there, and then you put everything in, in a folder. Then you have the health record. Now, this health record can be subjective or objective. And then it depends on what we're actually talking about. So the patient, you look at the patient's demograph. Um, every patient that have their own records, have, we, we normally we gather information about, about, you know, around the uh, demograph. You want to know, you know, their age, their sex, their name, <clears throat> address, and all this. So these are data that is very important uh, when it comes to either identifying this patient or even in distributing resources. So then we 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 have the history. I mean, information about the the, the next of kin. So from there, you get you know detailed history. As a medical student, we're taught how to collect information from patients. So you talk about you know uh the, the, the medical history so the, the presenting history and then you talk about you know history of presenting complaint past medical history family history social history allergy history so we put all this together in the patient all this will be found in the patient's record and then the examination findings for each time that they come and encounter with you know uh the practitioner you have examination uh information then you have you know the investigation, uh, you know, when you do the investigation, then you go about talking about the, 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 the diagnosis, both the provisional diagnosis and then uh, the, the differentials. So this, these are things that you find in a patient's uh, health record. The treatment that they had, the result of the previous investigation, you want to know whether they've had, you know, blood, uh, whatever it is, you find everything in the allergy, this, these are quite important because when you are when you are taking decision on a patient, you need to understand all these parameters and data so that from there you don't make mistake on what you're doing to them the next time. And then in the same you know um, uh, a system, it's important for us to know all these you know uh, preventive measures that we need to to be. What's 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 this patient's you know status? Of immunization, we want to know whether they have their screening. In fact, when we look at you know uh, places like in the UK, for instance, patients uh, are managed by the GP, and 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 the government pay the GP based on the performance. So let, let, let me make let me break that down. Uh, it doesn't happen here in Nigeria, but you know it, 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 you don't just open a, a clinic anyhow in the UK. You open a clinic when there's a need. So the population is, is you know, uh, the information about the population is known. And then you then look at this environment, as large as this environment is, how many doctors we have there. If we don't have enough doctors, you can argue that here, we don't have enough doctors, so we need to open up a surgery. This surgery, we need maybe four doctors. A surgery means clinic, like we call it here. So four doctors, and then these doctors, you know, that's where the, 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 the doctors then come together to say, okay, we want to open a practice here. It's a, it's a private thing, but obviously it's supervised by the, by, by the NHS. So we open a surgery here, and then the government then say, based on the information that we know about this area, people here, they have a lot of them with, say, diabetes or obesity, or they have high blood pressure. So because they have this level of you know needs based on the information that we have about this area we want the gp here to keep an eye on these people's blood pressure on their you know on their diabetic status on the and then they say okay you need to you need to bring them in maybe once every year maybe twice every year so but when you do that there's a performance target that is then put in place that once you're able to see maybe this patient that we know has diabetes, you are seeing them once or twice in a year, if you're able to achieve that target, we pay you. You understand? So you're being paid based on that performance. So that, that's why uh, health record helps a lot in, in, in the kind of, you know, in the distribution of the service 
and the, the quality of care that people get in a place where this is being utilized effectively. So I just use that as an example. So based on the, on the, on the, on the information that is packaged or that is pulled together in this area, we're able to actually deliver care to the community that, that will become quite effective and, um, uh, and um, uh, improve the quality that is delivered in that area. And these are the things that we need to be looking at when we're talking about whether we're moving from one format to the other or whether we are effectively using this, I mean, health record in, the, in, 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 in our countries or um, wherever we, we, we're practicing. So you find the nursing record also in there. You have the appointment record, you have the clinical response. And so the letter that goes about from one doctor to the other, because sometimes in the, let's say, I talk about primary care a lot because that's my background. So when you look at the primary health care, the primary health care doctor is supposed to be at the center of everything. So the patient come from the surgeons, they come back to the primary health care from the physician. I mean, they come back to the primary health care from gynae, they come back. So there would be a lot of correspondence that is going on. So in the health record, you find a place where this is this attachment is sitting down there, and then you should be able to, you know, to use to use this uh, um, appropriately for the patient for the care for your patient care. Consent form. Uh, for surgical procedures and things like that, all these are readily available in, 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 in there. So you have the theater report, you have the discharge letter, you have even the post mortem you know, uh, record. So, so all this information are all put together in this, uh, in this health, uh, health uh, record. Now, it's important for us to know that the health record is also a legal document. And this is where a, a, you know, information that we're putting in the health record is very important for us to make sure that it's very adequate, it's adequate as adequate as possible. Uh, a situation where people fiddle around with, with, with health records is very, very, uh, very, <laughs> very dangerous. If, if, if it comes to, you know, uh, a legal battle. Uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've read about situations where uh, doctors would do, you know, the, a doctor actually prescribed the medicine given to a particular patient Unfortunately, it was an overdose. This patient died, and then the doctors went and fiddle with 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 record. Of course, that's a criminal uh, situation. Yeah, okay, so the health record is a legal document, and these legal documents are there to protect either the practitioner uh, or, or, or or the patient as well. So, the documenters of health records. Who are the people that document health records? So, the individual that documents the records, they are called the documenters, okay? And this will be uh, the likes of doctors, you know, uh, receptionists, yeah? Medical assistants, doctors, I mean, I said doctors twice, nurses, right? Uh, pharmacists, you know, medical billers. Um, you have, <clears throat> there are methods of, um, sorry, I need to move this around, okay. Uh, structured documentation. So. Various, when we look at uh, an example, the electronic health records, when in an electronic health record format, there are, there are different, you know, uh, structures of documentations that will be available. I mentioned earlier on talk about, talking about, you know, presenting complaint, history of presenting complaint, past medical history, family history, social history, health, you know, allergy history and things like this. This is the structure that we were taught in the medical school, okay? So different, different health providers will have a different way by the structure that they put together. The most important thing is for, in, for, for in, in interoperability uh, purpose, it's good for us to unify the, the, the sort of structure that we use because the challenge that a lot of this system has, especially in electronic format, is when, when there's no integration right from the beginning, people are doing things haphazardly, then it becomes difficult to port things across and then integrate. So it's important when we're even thinking of moving from one format to the other or whatever as a nation or as a, as a, as a, as a place or wherever, it's important for us to come together and, and know that what we want to, you know, the kind of uh, structure that we want to be, be using. Now, the ownership of health records. This is a very, very important uh, piece of, uh, of, uh, of um, uh, of this because you know there's always that argument: who owns the health record, the patient 
or the provider. You know, this is not a very straightforward answer. You know, it varies and it depends on the area you find yourself. Even when I dug a little bit, within America alone, there are different rules between one between one state and the other. Some states will say patient owns it. I think one particular state says patient owns the record. But the, the, the general thing, the general, the general, uh, the general conception is that you know the individual who creates the record owns the record. So the record is owned by the healthcare provider. Okay, that is the position in most places. I can say in the UK, that's not really correct because in the UK, it is said that the, 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 the health uh, state owns the record. You understand? So the, it's the state that owns the record. Of course, the practice will gather the record for the state. So it's not owned by the patient, it's not owned by the provider, it's actually owned by the state in the UK, fact. Now, when we look at other, other, other countries and various places, there are different, you know, uh, different rules that guide, that guide that, but the general conception is the patient, the, the provider owns the record, but confidentiality is key. Security and confidentiality of the record is absolutely key. So I can't say, okay, I own, your, I own this record for patient, uh, for patient X, who is got, for, for instance, HIV, then I can go and display this, you know? No, so even though I, I mean, the practice or the provider own the record, the patient own the information, and then they have the right to confidentiality. So you have to keep things confidential as much as possible. And there are a lot we can talk about confidentiality, which I think that will be a discussion for another day. But you know, it's important for us to know that confidentiality is key, even though we own the record. It's our responsibility as a provider that own the record to provide confidentiality around it. Okay. Now uh, let's look at. Uh, so the, again. I, before I miss that bit, now the patient own the information. I hope we get that clear. The information in the record is owned by the patient. So it's what the patient tells me that I'm putting down. So that information is owned by the patient. But the record itself is for me as a provider. I'm just putting myself as a provider now. Okay, so if I'm a provider, the, the, the record, keeping the record, Taking care of it, you know, saving it and all the all the sorting the record and doing all that, it's my response, it's mine. But the information there is for the patient. So the patient has the right to access because it's their information. There are different processes that might be involved in patients getting the information. A lot of the time, patient can't just walk in and say, This is I need my information. You understand? There will be a process. It might be like oh, you write a letter to so 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 so, whether the practice manager or whatever requesting for your information, sometimes there might be a fee attached to that. You pay a certain amount of money, we put the records back to you. But when we're putting this record, I mean, these days it's quite easier. In those days when it's paper, you archive all this record, it takes a long time, patient will have to sign documents, they have to pull records, it takes time for somebody to go and look for it, and after that, so that, then photocopy and all that. So it takes, it takes a lot of, but now in the advent of electronics, it's a lot easier. So a patient can actually request for this electronically, and then this record can be, you know, whatever session or whatever record patient wants can actually be, you know, uh, pulled together and then put it to a secure place for the patient to also, um, um, to, to, you know, to harvest the information there while we still keep confidentiality as, uh, at, at, the, at the optimal level. Now, um, now, again, I want us to know that there's what is called professional discretion. There are times that the patients or, you know, patients or, or people that have the power of attorney might request for patients' record. And that, I might, as, a prof, as, a, as a practitioner, the, 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 the owner of this record, you might use your own discretion to feel that it might not be appropriate 
based on you know patient's best interest that is not appropriate for me to release this information that's actually allowed if i feel that this information is going to be detrimental to this patient's mental health or is going to uh, cause serious harm to this patient then in that case you could just you know stay in the way say that this you might not you know based on your own discretion you might you might you might you might decide not to give this information out okay now what are the importance of health reports so we're banging on about this health report why is this so important you know it's not far fetched uh you know we we know that the health records uh helps us to provide best care for our patients. How does that happen? Like I said earlier on, when we gather data, like I mentioned in the UK, for instance, we are able to use this data to look at, you know, uh, the, 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 the population and look at what are the conditions that is, that is quite, you know, that is endemic around this area or prevalent around this area. On that, in that basis, it, it helps us with the kind of, you know, resources that we want to put there the kind of services that we think we need to bring into place in a place where you have a lot of people with stroke, you know that you will need physiotherapists around that area. You understand? So if you cite the physiotherapy around that, if you're a physiotherapy unit around that area, it's, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a way of providing care for that area. So it helps in the best care for the patient. Okay. Now uh, we can also look at Nigeria, for instance, in Nigeria, I, I look at the situation where Nigeria is a huge country, okay? And I have a situation where you have somebody, uh, a businessman is here in, um, in Lagos today. Tomorrow is flying to Abuja. Next tomorrow is in Portacot, Kano, Kaduna, all these big, big cities, they're flying around all everywhere. Anything can happen along the line. So if they, they, somebody might be here today, uh, they're fine tomorrow, they get to Abuja, they have malaria, okay? Now, how do we manage these people? How do we manage these people because the, the the continuity of care is really important after the person has had the treatment in abuja is flown back to lagos he's not getting well then he wants to continue to you know to be treated you don't know what has happened in abuja now he's in in in, in, uh, in, in lagos then he's, he's, he becomes a burden on another doctor here who we then have to start from the scratch in the middle of it he hasn't finished the you know investigation diagnosis or whatever patient has to go to Kadena or kano so how do you manage this if there's no health record that can give us continuity of care? And this is where the mobile health portal is also, I mean, obviously might be important in some area because I didn't mention the mobile, uh, I've talked about DMR and EHR. I didn't talk about the mobile health. This can also be one thing that can be integrated because there are situations where the patient actually hold their own records. Okay, so in, 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 in mobile health situation, patient hold their record. Then you can say, okay, this is what I had yesterday, uh, and then show to, to, the, to the care provider. If the patient has that ability, I mean, if they have that uh, opportunity of keeping their own care. We, I mean, we, I can I'll talk about some example. We, we, we have some, you know, um, soft software that we use to, to manage something like this, like area doc. And then we have some partners as well that we, we, we also work with within this, this uh, space to make sure that we have this continuity of care around the health record management, okay? So uh, it also improves the quality of care. You know, quality of care in the sense that, you know, uh, quality deliver. Uh, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you have an idea about the patient's health, you know, uh, record, it's easier for me, when we talk about continuity, it's easier for me to look back and see what they've had before and see how we can use that to improve the care that they need even today and planning for the for, for, for the future. So the fact that the records are, if the records are robust, it makes it easier for us in terms of you know the the the, 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 the improving the quality of care of the of the patients. Now we look at the legal documents. Uh, it, 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 they have uh, like I mentioned earlier on, these are legal documents. They are there to protect the providers, which are you know, whoever is put the documentation in there and also the patient. So it's very absolutely important for us to make sure that the information we're putting in the health record, whether it's the EMR or EHR or, or medical, I mean, or mobile health 
reporter is accurate as much as possible. You cannot be too uh, meticulous about this because any day, any time, somebody can just bring this out and say, this is what you've written, this is what you say. So if you, if you, you don't put anything that is, in, in, in your, that is not correct, that is inappropriate or things like that in the medical record. Okay, so it provides statistical information. So based on the based on the record that we have, we're able to know, you know, um, in terms of numbers, well, what's 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 the situation around this particular health situation, even around the, 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 the you know uh, a particular region, uh, and then the information that you put in there as the health record of the patient also it helps us in this in this situation for instance you want to know how many patients have been screened for say breast cancer i'm i'm, I'm used to this how many patients have been screened for breast cancer so is the record that is put you can then look at auditing or uh, a, a, the health record of a particular practice you know because we have the practice um, uh, my management system that can then look at this health record whereby you look at you know uh, how many of our patients have been screened when maybe you're supposed to screen 100%, you're screening 70%. Then it gives you the statistic equal understanding of where you are and then how you can improve that. And that, you know, that's where auditing also come into place. And that helps us in distribution of health resources. Financial reimbursement. Okay, so if we have a robust healthcare health record, it's easier for us to, to pay, you know, to pay. Uh, I, I, I mentioned something about the core, you know, uh, score, uh, points in the UK, whereby the, the GPs have said, okay, they, you need to make sure that this number of people that have that blood pressure within your uh, environment, you must you must check all of them for blood pressure once every year. Okay, that is the target you must meet. Okay, when you do that. From the record, we can see that you have done that. Then we can pay you the money that is allotted for that particular service. It could be something around diabetes. It could be something around, you know, post-operative care. It could be something around, you know, uh, yeah, pediatrics care management and all that. So they can then do this and then use that one as a financial a way of doing your reimbursement. And again. Um, if we look at the health uh, insurance, you know, uh, uh, portal, uh, even in Nigeria, we're now that we're going into, you know, uh, national health insurance scheme, it becomes very important for us to have this, to have a robust health record, whereby we can then use this one to transition between, uh, pay, you know, seeing patients, delivering care, and payments. Okay. All right. So the roles of the health record practitioners. So now, for all, before I talk about the roles of the health record practitioners, I want us to know that there are some important characteristics that they need to, to attributes that they need to you know to have. Things like you have to be independent. Independent means that whatever when you're when you're dealing with patients, you know, we're dealing with records, you're on your own. You, you have to be able to do things independently, to be able to take initiatives, to understand how you're going to deliver things, how you know, because record management, it's it's a bit, it's on, it's not only just the way we say it. We we talk about paper, we talk about electronics and the paper format. There are places where Part of the hospital is in paper format. So this paper format overnight, you need to go and collect the, the, the paper. You put the paper together somewhere. You need to sort them. It's not everything that is written in paper that needs to go into electronic format. So you have to be, you have to have an idea of some medical terminologies. You have to, to have an idea of basic computer knowledge. You need to have a very good organizational skill, interpersonal skills as well, because you might need to relate with you know, even the patients, if the, some of the patients, some of the information might, there might be a gap in some of the information, you know, and then maybe a patient is coming in, they've written a lot, some of them are just, some of somebody is scribbled on, you're not scanning all those things to the record, you need to know how to sort this 
that's where your organizational skill has to be very up to up to, you know a uh, top notch so you need to you need to sort this you need to see what is important what's not important when you do that then you have to scan then you have to you know save and then you need to do your qa and things i'll come back to that in a minute um quite a few things there so they will help to provide you know best care for the patient obviously because you're helping to sort out i mean this profession when we talk about health record professionals this profession is mean majorly for people who one way or the other you want to work in health healthcare you know uh environment but maybe dealing with patients dealing with blood dealing with all these things is not yours but you want to be part of the team that deliver healthcare because your role becomes very, very important if you've seen what I've talked about. Because it's a system we're working on. It's a system that we everything, all the node has to be like everybody know, they know, you know what you're doing for us to deliver a quality care. So you, you know, if you are the kind of person you want to work in healthcare system and you're not keen about all these touching patients, touching this one, then this is an area that you might then look into. So you help to provide the best care, you're part of the healthcare team, even though you are not seeing physically seeing this patient. So you're, it's your responsibility to help in, in releasing records. So patient is being admitted, we're still running a physical record. It's your role to help in delivering, you know, this record to the care provider. You're, you're, you just have to work with the health provider to make sure that promptly, we have all the records as soon as, as quickly as possible so that we can know. I'll take an example again. If I have a patient who is worked in, let's say I'm in the in the in, in emergency unit, the patient is worked in, then we're running a paper, paper, paper-based system. And I, this patient is coming in with chest pain. And I don't know whether I mean I've done an ECG. The ECG, that's the electrocardiogram, which shows the, the treating of the heart. There are certain things we look at on the tracing. If I've seen something in the tracing that shows that this person might be having heart attack, but I need to see whether this thing in the tracing is there before I deliver the next line of treatment. You understand? Because it might be that this blip that I'm seeing on, the, on this chart has been there the last time this patient came into the hospital. Then I want the record. It's now your responsibility to make sure that I get that record promptly because time is of the essence for this patient, myocardial you know, the, the muscle of the heart, whether they will continue to die or I'm going to arrest that happening. And then the quality of care of this, the quality of life of this patient can be preserved. So that's where, that's how important it is for people, uh, for, 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 for a health record uh, professional to be part of the team of um, healthcare delivery. Now your role will also include collecting documentation, like I said, Maybe we're still running the paper documentation. You now, there's a clinic that we just finished. It's your role to make sure that this paper one that we've done today, you're collecting it. And then after collecting it, you're looking at the documentation, go through it. If we're, obviously, if we're transitioning from paper to electronic, look at the record, the documentation. You have to collate whatever is being you know, written today. You have to scan it, you have to sort it, you have to prep, you know, uh, prep it, you know, and then you scan it and then index it. Indexing is simple. Well, indexing means that you need to make sure that this thing is in the right place. For instance, you can't put my, the ECG in this slot for CT scan. If I'm going to look at ECG, I'm going straight into clicking on ECG or looking at investigation ECG. You understand? So if you index it wrongly, it goes into somewhere else. I look at this, oh, this person hasn't had ECG before. But then you've, you've indexed it in the, wrong, in, the, in the wrong place. So you need to do all that, all that properly. Billing, you will be, you'll be involved in billing because for, 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 for patients to be billed, if, if you understand what they've come to, uh, the treatment they've, they've, they've received, then whoever is, the, the biller will be able to do that appropriately. So it's your responsibility uh, or part of your role to be able to, you know, to help in making this uh, a reality. Coding is very important as well. When you code a, a record, where you need to use obviously various, there are various coding uh, um, uh, uh, software. Okay, like ICD for instance. So that you have, you have, you have, you have, um, you have you, we, we, there, there are specific coding, uh, I can't remember what they call them now, but th things that there are, there are, there are, 
there are factors that, or there are numbers or so that you use for coding. So there are different systems. There are different coding systems. I'm used to the ICD coding system whereby you can look at various diseases by mere putting their code, you know which disease is it, uh, this, what disease it, it, it is that this patient is. And so you'll be involved in, in all this, in auditing as well. Audit simply means that you need to you need to look at the record and see what standard is it that we expect for a particular bit in this record in this record. Are we achieving that standard or are we not? If we are not, then you will work together to see how we can improve to achieve the standard. So to make that easy, let me look at an example I can use. So for instance, I mentioned, uh, let's say asthma, for instance, people with asthma, okay? You want to make sure that everybody with asthma needs to have, uh, they need to have um, subutamol or uh, some of the medication for prevention, okay? Beclometazide. Let's say they have it. Uh, what well, you want to say that everybody that has uh, asthma need to have their steroids inhaler, okay? That's the standard we run. Everybody with asthma need to have the steroid inhaler, especially if they've had asthma more than twice in, 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 in a month, okay? They need to have the blue, I mean, the, the brown inhaler, which is the steroid, okay? Now, you can then be asked to help us to audit this or to help us in the auditing process. That I want to be sure that all the patients that we have that have asthma, all of them has it. So you then look at, you pull out from, you use your code or whatever from the coding bit, pull out all the patient with asthma. So when you pull out all the patient with asthma, then you look at how many of them actually have had this treatment prescribed. So you can look at the, you can look at the health record and then you can pull that out for us whether we are meeting the target or not. If we're not meeting the target, then it's not, left of, it's not left to us to now decide how do we work around improving this, uh, you know, this, this, this process. So you'll be involved in, 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 in auditing. Then QA, quality assurance of, of the health record. So you will be involved in, in managing that as well. So continuity of care, you're involved in, in you know, um, in, 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 in you, you're definitely involved in this because we talk about the health record and uh, the care that your, you know, uh, obviously, uh, um, I mean, we, we look at, sorry, I just got distracted there, sorry. So the continuity of care means that, you know, obviously uh, you, you're part of the system that is making this happen by managing the health system for us. Legal documentation, obviously, we mentioned this earlier on. Uh, again, we mentioned this one, so it's important in research, distribution of health resources, these are very important. Financial reimbursement, we mentioned all that before. Now, clinical decision, this is important for doctors, especially, or care provider. It's, uh, it's you know, this helps us, it helps the provider to set protocols and templates for specific, you know, uh, uh, patient and specific conditions actually, you know. So it, it's very important for us to know that this is, uh, this is um, you know, from the, from the electronic medical uh, record where you can, you, can, you can set protocols, you can set templates that will help you in clinical decision, you know, uh, support. So uh, when we have a protocol or we have a template, that template can be, for instance, you can say asthma. You can have asthma templates. Then asthma templates, it, it, it just makes it easier for, for us to say, okay, in our, in our practice, this is what we want to achieve. For. So the, the template is there, you just fill the template. So it's a, it's a very important thing to, to consider. But this is not something that is automatically generated in health record. The, you, you as a provider or your, your, your practice or the, your, your institution might want to look into how to, to utilize this in your, in, your, in your practice because the facilities will be there most times. It's usually, okay, when you set the protocols or you send the template, you usually do that around the evidence base. So this helps you to do things in, in, you know, in, in, in a contemporary world the, the, and things that will be evidence-based, which is where our patient come into play. Whatever we're doing to our patient, we want it to be evidence-based uh, practice so that they're getting the best uh, at, at the time. Now, the practice management software. 
I'm not going to bore you on this, but I think it's important for us to know this when we talk about electro, you know, when we talk about health record. You know, this is more, uh, it's more robust, and I think it's more of, you know, a practice and business aspect of things mainly. So it's a system where you can look at everything in totality, the health record. So you'd say, uh, what are they doing? For instance, in 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 in, a, in an hospital, you're looking at what they're doing in emergency, what they're doing in the clinic what they're doing in the ward, what they're doing in the theater, what they're doing. So this helps you to manage the whole system uh, where the, the, the health record is in the middle of it. Okay? Right, so I, I think I'm, I'm getting to the end of my, pre my presentation here, but I want us to know that, you know, obviously the reason why we're talking about all this thing is for us to move from wherever we are to you know to, to, to improve and there are there are there are various you know um, healthcare providers whether home and away and we, we do things the way we do it the important thing is we, we we want to move from wherever we are to a better position and that's where we need to appraise ourselves whatever whatever we're doing i know for most of us here we're more of an information technologist or we're, we're a health um, record person and things like that. And I know that we have doctors also amongst us. So what, whatever we're doing, it has to be things that will work together as a team. We need to have a common goal, patient being at the center of whatever we're doing, deliver, delivering quality of care is the core of whatever we're doing. And you can't do that without talking about the health record because the health record is key to what most of um, for, for, for most of the things that we do in our in our environment uh, in in our, uh, practices. I want to believe that I've covered uh, most of these um, points, and then I think at this stage I want to thank you so much for the opportunity. And I want to give room for questions. Thank you very much, Doctor. That was a wonderful presentation. I hope we all can hear me. Um, yes, thank you. The, well, thank you. Struggling to hear you, sir. Sorry, he must have been due to the network. You know, I'm like I mentioned earlier on. I'm actually, in, I'm still in transit. Um, that was a wonderful session. And personally, I've benefited a lot from this session. And I believe um, other attendees too will have equally benefited from it. Um, we would like to entertain a couple of questions before we call it a day. Um, among the attendees, if we have questions to ask, uh, this is the right time for you to ask your questions. If you need clarification on any other thing, you can, you have the floor. So ensure you unmute your mic, uh, you know, to enable you to uh, ask whatever question or contribution uh, you might be having. The floor is now open. Thank you so much. If, a, if you have any question, uh, I'll be happy to, 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 to take that. Uh, good afternoon. Well, good evening. Can you hear me? Can I hear you? Kindly introduce yourself. Uh, Rotsu Mijayasin is the name. Wow. The technician. Uh, thank you, uh, Femi, uh, Dr. Kumulani. For event. Oh my God! Sorry. I'm, okay, let me just. I can't hear a thing. Can, can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? Can, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, we can. I can't hear a thing. Well, he can He see. might have to. Oh, that's. He might have to type it. I can't hear. Okay, uh, Prof, I will advise you proceed with your question. 
I will help to um, re echo it to Dr. Ogureni. Yes, we can hear you. I have, I have two questions or two comments or two questions. Uh, he referred to uh, the professional discretion uh, in releasing uh, case records. Could he give an example or examples of that? And my second question is about cyber security. Uh, what do you put in place to make sure your records are not hacked or you have ransomware in them? Okay, Dr. Gurami, did you get that? I got, I think I got the first one about, um, um, it, it, it was asking about uh patients records um professional discretion sorry professional discretion. professional discretion professional discretion okay so an example of a personal discretion where you can okay take a discretion not to not to release a record so if a patient for instance has a, a mental issue that is being related to the health record uh, and you think that if you release these health records to the patients, they, this might affect or make their mental health worse. You can, you can that's, that's in, the, in the best interest of this patient. You might want to hold back releasing their records. So that's, that's an exception, it's an exceptional cases, which, you know, sometimes you might just find yourself in it. Maybe a patient who, who is probably schizophrenic or they've got some serious depression. And then there are information in their health record that you think if they capture that, 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 may, that might make things worse. Uh, I mean, um, so it, 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 it's difficult to say this example, but there, there, are, there, might, there will be a situation like that. If, 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 it will be a very, very rare case. Now, a patient is calm, um, they are, they are depressed patients, maybe severe depression, and then there have been issues around somebody has volunteered some information in their record, for instance. It's been clearly documented. You know, if this patient sees these things, it might tip them to the other side, and then they might then go down the route of, you know, severe depression, which could be life-threatening as well. So you could take a discretion at that level that look on, on, on you know, on personal, you know, uh grant and for for the sake of this patient's um best interest you are not releasing this information i hope that that that's that's that 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 probably answered the question i'm not sure yes it does thank you sir uh, so the second question i didn't hear that sir i have i have typed it in the chat box oh okay let me see Okay, I think he's actually talking about uh, uh, protection of records now. That, uh, what do you put in place to ensure that uh, there is adequate protection of uh, medical records um, devoid of attack from hackers or uh, malicious okay. attack, like I'm um, having a situation where ransomware, you know, yeah. okay. things like that. Okay, thank you so much for that question, sir. So it's important for, for us to, to know that, obviously, as we go about doing, I mean, I think the Americans have gotten this thing, they got it better. So there, there are, there are for, you to, for you to actually launch any product in America, you need to be HIPAA compliant. So for, 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 for a, a lot of these records, they have to be HIPAA compliant, and that links into the security aspect of things. That are the basic things that you have to, to put in place. For instance, your, your documentation. If you are keeping things in, in the cloud, you want to be sure that obviously your security uh, system is, is adequately in place. You, you know, things like maybe SSL, uh, things like, um, you know, the, 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 the in-house protection of your, of your, of your uh, server, you know, you want to, and then you have to encrypt all, all your documentation. And I'll, 
you know, you need to also be up to scratch with all the new updates because all the softwares that we're using, uh, most of them, you know, they, they get updated and sometimes they lapse on this one and people do not update their, you know, their, 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 their records and all their, their softwares because what the, the, the up, this updates that comes every now and then, sometimes they're, they're, they're expensive to, make, to manage, but they're important because it's, it's actually learning from what's going on in the space. And that's where the update comes. And then that's why uh, they use this one to also safeguard your documents. In fact, what, what, what we do in our organization is we give this headache to a third party. For instance, um, uh, what, what's, what's their name now? Um, Amazon. Amazon has a cloud-based system. We have the we have the uh, digital ocean, you know. And then you have you have you, you know there are different types of this you know this um, uh, cloud system that will hold you know they will hold and protect and take responsibility for all the security aspects of your data, you know whether you you have back, you back up in series or you. You have whatever, so they, they, they take care of all these things uh, in, in totality. So it's important for us to to, to, to to get all those you know sorted when we are when we are running a, a system like this. Lovely, thank you. That's I, I think the president can help me on this one if if, if there's anything <laughs> else I need to add. <laughs> I think I think you've really done justice to the question. Yes. but I also believe um, uh, medical facilities can also leverage um, on ISO standard um, 13606, um, which um, will ensure that data is adequately protected and um, there could also be opportunity for adequate audit trail, which could be helpful in the case of investigation or in a situation where um, there is need to ascertain, you know, certain access to from records and so on and so forth. So, I think uh, the basic um, um, the, the basic information are what you already mentioned. You've already mentioned. So, um, thank you. If we have any other question before we call it a day, we will appreciate. Yeah. From the uh, fans. Good evening. You have the floor, please. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, ma. Uh, my name is Halima. I'm calling from, um, joining from Stockholm, Sweden. And uh, yeah, I am from Prescriber Health Tech, which is uh, an EHR solution. And thank you so much, Dr. Femi Oguremi. I mean, we know that uh, we are partners, right? And uh, I've enjoyed your discussion so far uh, regarding health records. But I just want to know uh, where are we at today in Nigeria? <laughs> regarding um, uh, electronic um, health records or even electronic medical records. And anyone in the house um, can actually also answer as well or to just give us like an idea. Yeah, okay. So I could just have a, I could just uh, mention a few things here and then I'll get anybody that, that probably more experience in this area than me as I'm always I'm double-legged here in the UK so from what I gathered um, I know that electronic health records is still in the incubation period here so people are still trying to figure out how to do it. There are there are hospitals in fully electronic one of them is Federal Medical Center uh, that hospital is fully electronic now um th then if you look at um, a, a lot of private hospitals are trying to use their own management you know uh software to to very very far behind i think uh and that's why i try to talk about you know transitioning uh from from paper to electronic um so that, I, I think I can't put a number to it. I can't tell you percentages, but obviously, um, and if you look at Nigeria as a whole, I think 
we there's no way I would see us being up to like maybe 30 percent fully electronic when we look at all the health cases. I don't think we're up to that. So, but um, a lot of people are quite aware now. There's been, I've had so many people, you know, agitating, coming to me. In fact, last year, Lagos State, was it last year or year before? It was year before the last. Lagos State was, you know, we had a, we had a, a, a discussion around this, which was uh, uh, spearheaded by the, by the present commissioner for health where we were you know brainstorming on uh the rights the rights platform to use and now to go fully electronic uh that's uh push that behind but um, there's still a lot a lot of work to do in that in that space. please anybody can just uh, uh corroborate that please help me <laughs> yeah thank you uh, thank, thank you Lord. yeah Thank you, Doctor. Um, in addition to what uh, Dr. Gurani just mentioned, um, in Nigeria generally, we still have a lot, um, a lot to do in that um, in that space. Um, you talk about the issues around uh, regulations. There are um, we um, in Nigeria we do not have um, relevant laws and regulations that um, mandates um, health the health uh, sector to ensure that um, data and information being collected are being harnessed in um, a particular way. There are no known standards, there are no specifications, there are no um, official procedures for data collection, data classification, data storage, data access and so on and so forth. So I think this is a huge lacuna that um, uh, professionals and practitioners in the industry actually uh, need to take a look at. There is need for health, healthcare institutions and professionals to come together you know, to be able to develop uh, something that is homegrown, something that is going, something that is going to be practically, um, you know, possible to implement in our climb over here. Um, I remember Dr. Gurani mentioned something about uh, IPA, and I think um, there is need for us to have um, a local, you know, kind of um, uh, regulation like that, you know, that will guide the process, the entire management of data and information life cycle in the health sector. Uh, I, I see this as uh, another topic, you know, that we need to um, uh, beam our searchlight on in uh, subsequent um, webinars that the Institute of Information Management is actually going to, uh, you know, organize in the nearest future. And, um, you know, um, it, it is a, it, it's a wonderful opportunity for us, you know, to come together as professionals um, and be able to uh, develop something that is workable and something that will really help the sector, you know, to grow and develop. Um, I also want to mention the fact that um, uh, we now have the NDPR in Nigeria, that is the Nigerian Data Protection Regulation, which is equally applicable to, you know, how organizations, you know, manage uh, personal data being collected in the course of um, uh, the execution of their official duties or in the course of their business um, transactions and operations. So it's, uh, we've got a lot, we've got a lot on our plate that we need, you know, to pay attention to if we really want to go the health sector. So I, I want to uh, leave the floor for others that might have one or two things, you know, to contribute in, in this area. Thank you very much, sir, for the input and clarification. You're most welcome. Any other comments or contribution before we call it today? Thank you, that's all. Okay, in the absence of um, additional comments, uh, before we say good night, um, I, uh, I would like to use this opportunity to remind us that our next webinar um, will be coming up in the month of April. And um, it's actually going to be on the 15th of April to be precise. And uh, we shall be looking at digital transformation in finance and accounting. Um, 
shortly we'll be uh, rolling out the the broadcast you know for us to to avail us the opportunity uh to register to attend this and for those that uh, attended this particular session for a minimum of one hour uh they are entitled to apply for a free um, certificate of attendance uh, for our information, certificate of attendance is free for IIM Africa members and uh, non-members uh, do get to pay a token, you know, to obtain their uh, certificates. Um, in addition to the certificates, um, we also have uh, one hour free CPD points uh, for this particular session. So on that note, um, we want to call it a day. I would like to use this opportunity to invite non-members to also avail themselves the opportunity to join this um, all-important professional institute. On Saturday, we shall be having our first uh, um, annual conference in 2021, uh, which is uh, slated for 20th March at the University of Lagos. Uh, we're going to be talking about data protection and uh, we're going to be talking about, you know, uh, regulations around data protection. All is now set, and uh, we all are invited. So thank you for your time as we look forward to hosting you once again um, in April uh, for our next webinar. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. Thank you.